What's up guys, Luke here with Luke's Points and Miles, and today I have our latest and greatest Ask Me Anything video. And I'm gonna skip most of the intro just to get started. Like and subscribe if you would, and let's get right into it. Johnny Appleton asks if I've ever thought of posting any type of exercise routine. Johnny, I don't think I would ever do that. For one, everyone for some reason thinks I'm a meathead, but I'm actually not. And two, there are much better guys out there who are putting out content. If you wanna get strong and jacked, look up Jim Wendler's 531, or there's a book out by the Lillibridge family. But that's the kind of stuff I used to do to build strength and size. Nowadays, I'm more of a Planet Fitness guy, just trying to lose some weight and prepare myself for old age. Friend of the channel and fellow credit card YouTuber, JP Knowledge. If you haven't checked out his channel, please do so. It's good stuff. JP wants to know my optimal amount of time for a vacation. Well, JP, I like my routine. I like my work. I like my gym time. So I'm not super interested in long vacations. I don't even call them vacations. I like two or three night trips where I can still get a little bit of work done, but that amount of time really energizes me and it allows me to take more trips. I really have limited amounts of time I can take off work, so I have to keep them short anyway. A six week vacation would probably change my perspective, but I'll find that out after I retire from my day job, I guess. Cesar Joel wants to know what I hate most about content creation. Cesar, I don't really hate anything about it, but if I had to pick something, I really hate that I didn't jump on this years ago. I really wish I would have kept up with technology and different programs and software, and I wish I would have been into the YouTube space at least in my early 30s. Philip Kim wants to know the pros and cons of using business cards for personal use. Well, the pros are your utilization will not report to the credit bureaus, and business credit cards have some really great benefits and they don't count towards your 524 status. Cons may be if you do use business cards to keep track of your business expenses, then using them for personal reasons could be a lot more work at the end of the year. I don't have a bunch of tips to separate and track business expenses because I don't actually have more than a few large expenses per year, so I don't really worry too much about separating them. David Ruiz, a longtime friend of the channel asks, when I plan an international trip like Prague, how flexible am I willing to be? David, I will basically just pick a general time, say like October, and then I'll look for deals. So like for my trip in October to Prague, the dates were very flexible. I just have to be home before trick or treat. You dads understand. Matt Clausen asks if I could go back in time what advice would I give myself at the very beginning? Matt, I honestly don't think like that. I am where I am because of all my stupid mistakes. If I could do it all over again, I would start with certain no annual fee cards and build a very precise strategy. But what would that matter now? I earn tons of points. I constantly get new cards. I would tell myself to be more patient and slow down my velocity, but I also know that I wouldn't listen to me. Some of these questions, I deleted the original question after I cropped the image, so I may misinterpret some of, the, some of these, but Ralph may not be taking the aspirational trips, and he wants some insight for folks that travel domestic economy. Well, Ralph, my maximum value redemption videos include things like using Virgin Atlantic to fly Delta economy and using British Airways to fly American Airlines economy. And there are tons of ways to get value with the less glamorous travel. I think the best way for things like that is with either a great cash back system or maybe the Chase Sapphire Reserve for that 1.5 cents in the portal. Also, some of the other portals, such as the Chase Portal or the Capital One Portal, can also include some great value, especially for that domestic economy stuff. Jeffrey Roberts, one of our big time elite members, asked about the new Strata cards from Citi. Jeffrey, I think we will see big things from Citi, and I know that sounds crazy to most folks, but I think the cards will be competitive, and I think they'll include some protection. On the subject of travel protections, I always thought the best protection was to have more points and miles. Just my way of doing things, if something goes wrong on travel day, I would rather have my own plan than to have to call a credit card issuer for help. Although, 
After it's all over, I will call and try to get some type of remedy. Adam recalls I've mentioned in previous videos that I don't feel I have the appearance of an easy target while traveling, and he's curious if there are any trips I may not have taken or done in a different way. Well, Adam, I really don't know. I kind of told myself a long time ago that no one other than me would ever determine where I went and what I did, but there are still places I probably will not visit. I don't really go to crazy party places full of college age males full of testosterone. I just don't need that kind of trouble in my life. I also won't go to Russia right now for any reason. If you're looking to make yourself a harder target, there are tons of articles written about criminals and predators and their psychology. It's a really cool subject that I can do an entire video on, but they know how to pick their prey. Isaac Carwile wants to know, once I'm under 524, what Chase consumer cards will I apply for? Isaac, I'm hoping Chase still has the one year five times on grocery offer on the freedoms by then, so I will definitely grab at least one of those. I may also be interested in the Southwest Companion Pass at the beginning of 2024, so that will likely require both the personal and the business cards from Southwest. Basil Hamad asks, what was my favorite international trip so far? Man, I don't know. They are all just so completely different. I think my favorite has to be when I was 19 years old and I was in the Navy. We visited Spain, Greece, Israel, Italy, Malta, France, Turkey, Romania, and Ukraine. I'm probably forgetting a couple places. Nothing in the whole world could ever beat being young and stupid in the mid 90s. Those of you that were there, you know. Connor Sheridan says he's planning a trip to Italy and he's asking about the current Hyatt Globalist promotion and wants to know if it's worth going for it. Connor, this is my personal opinion. I don't think it's worth going on a mattress run where folks use dummy bookings or they use up their resources to artificially accumulate stays just for status. I think that is something folks will do when they are using certain strategies and they're accumulating millions of points. That might make sense for them. For us normal folks, I think for the majority of us, those 50,000 Hyatt points you'd have to use to manufacture stays would probably be better use making memories. Remember, these companies love to make us do things we don't want to do for them. Gavin James Garcia wants to know my setup for someone who enjoys cruising. I'm going to be honest, I really don't cruise, so I've never really bothered to pay attention to it, but there are some very recent articles on the Frequent Miler about this exact thing. Just Google Frequent Miler free cruises. I'm pretty sure the post has something to do with that Wyndham business card. Mark Becerra, he wants to know if I have any tips on saving on airfare from Japan. He lives in Japan and it just costs too much to fly home to the States. Sorry, Mark, all the flights I've booked and researched have always been more expensive to re-enter the US. The fees and taxes are just generally higher. KMB wants to know how I booked my Patrick's Day Ireland trip last year in 2022. Well, KMB, I'm almost ashamed to admit how I did it now. I used my American Express Business Platinum to book Delta flights and Comfort Plus while they were on sale and I paid with points. This gave me the 35% rebate on points, but it still wasn't a great deal. For hotels, I think I did very poorly. I booked a lot of hotels because I scheduled us different cities every night and I used a third party site like booking.com or hotels.com. I did this one because I didn't want to book chain hotels, which is silly. And two, I was spending for the sign up bonus for an American Express business gold card. So I wanted to book rooms that charged me now as opposed to three months from now. And I also wanted to book rooms that were refundable. So I would not recommend any of those things, but I still wanted to be transparent and admit I'm not perfect. I'd use Aer Lingus for cheap flights from JFK to Dublin, or actually for me, Cleveland has Dublin flights now. So I might look at that option. Aer Lingus can sometimes be 12,000 avios each way. Can't get much better than that. Tito's Financial Corner wants to know which card I prefer between the American Express Gold and the Venture X. Tito, if you watch a lot of my videos, you'll definitely know that this is a very easy answer. And the answer is almost always both. I have both. 
I use the gold card more often, but I really like the Venture X, and one day, I really think it'll get a lot more playing time. Meds asks what I think about the US Bank Altitude Reserve having a minimum of $5,000 credit limit. Meds, I am a big fan of US Bank credit cards in general, and I think the Altitude Reserve is a great card for some folks. I never really worry about credit limits on cards unless they're really low. US Bank is kind of weird with their credit limits because they normally give me a fairly high limit, but for one business card, they gave me a $1,500 limit and it required a $7,500 spend for the signup bonus. Weird. So if you plan on banking with them, check out their checking account bonuses. And yes, those are churnable. Robert Dorf, another one of our awesome elite channel members, he asks about the most efficient way to change tactics from points to cash back? That's a great question, Robert. I like my cash back cards to have no annual fee so I can slowly build that arsenal of cards even if I'm not really using them very often. Obviously, if you're going to go straight cash back, you'll eventually want to pare down your high annual fee travel cards. And just to mention, I am not a huge fan of the Charles Schwab Platinum for cashing out points. I think there are so many better options for a cash back setup than a bunch of high annual fee American Express cards. Me personally, I was okay cashing out at 1.25, but when they changed it to 1.1 cents per point, I lost all interest and I canceled my Charles Schwab Platinum card. No thank you. I will always find a better use for those MR points than 1.1 cents cash. JP Buffett asks when I think about my ideal credit card, what are three multipliers and three perks it would need? It's a pretty good mental exercise. I need high multipliers on dining, groceries, and the third category, I'm not going to pick gas. I'm going to pick cable, internet, and phone, since that's a lot of times one category in so many systems. The biggest reason is I can prepay those things as much as I want, or I can buy the newest iPhone and get a really great return. Three perks, if you watch the channel, you know that I highly value airport lounge access. That is my favorite credit card perk of all time. So let's go with that and let's go with at least some lower airline and hotel status to round out the three perks. No obscure credits, please. That's a big league card right there. Jason wants to know how closely does Chase monitor expenses for business slash personal expenses on the ink cards. He's asking if he could use an ink card for a medical expense. Jason, I think Spencer Johnson mentioned in one of his videos that the cardholder agreement with Chase states that these cards are for business expenses only. And that is me prefacing this next sentence. I don't know of any instance of Chase in anyone's business as far as what they use cards for. I know folks that use ink cards for everything. If it were me, I would use it for a large medical expense to hit the sub. I wouldn't give it any thought at all. 911 Evoke wants to know if my wife has ever threatened to leave me for opening new lines of credit for myself and her. He says because it impacts our ability to get approved for loans. Well, instead of just deleting this one, I figured it would be a good teaching point. Now, my wife has definitely threatened to leave me before, but never for opening lines of credit. She actually doesn't have a large amount of credit lines in her name, and I've never had any trouble getting approved for loans. If we count HELOCs and refis, I've been approved for four mortgages since being in the credit card game, even at a very high velocity. And my loan officers do tell me that I'm still good for at least two more mortgages for investment properties just based on my personal income. I don't have any consumer debt, so my debt to income ratio is really good. Having open lines of credit with very low utilization will not likely adversely affect your ability to be approved for loans. And last but not least, James UQB wants to know if I went on my last trip for free. Well, James, not exactly. Airfare was covered by miles. The hotel was covered by hotel points but I seem to have way overspent while I was there. So not free, but I will say heavily discounted. Okay guys, that is it for part two. As you can see, I got slapped with a lot of questions, but hey, if you took the time to ask, 
I will take the time to answer. Do me a favor and check out my links in the description. And if you want more information on any card, check out my super organized card link below. It's a great way to support the channel. And if you use my links, I will greatly appreciate it. As always, thank you. You are all appreciated.